1946, an order came through to destroy all the records of what had been the Allies' most secret operation of World War II. The code-breaking unit at Bletchley Park. Everything was destroyed. There wasn't a scrap left. By mid-1940, the German army had conquered all of Western Europe. Hitler was tightening the noose around Britain. In the Atlantic, German U-boats were decimating Allied convoys, threatening to cut off Britain's only lifeline. But Churchill had a secret weapon, the strangest military establishment in the world. Crossword fanatics, chess champions, mathematicians, students and professors, Americans and British, all came here with one common aim, to unlock the secrets of the Enigma, a machine that concealed Germany's war plans in seemingly unbreakable code. If Enigma could be penetrated, everything Hitler plotted would be known in advance. At Bletchley Park, there unfolded one of the most astonishing exploits of the Second World War. Many here had never seen a code before, yet it was their job to find a way to crack Enigma. In the process, they devised ingenious code-breaking machines that were forerunners of the modern computer. But everything they did remained classified for 30 years. Tonight, Nova reveals the secrets of the men and women who helped turn the tide of victory and shape the future. funding for NOVA is provided by the Park Foundation, dedicated to education and quality television. CNET, bringing the digital age into focus. CNET.com, the source for computers and technology. This program is funded in part by Northwestern Mutual Life, which has been protecting families and businesses for generations. Have you heard from the quiet company? Northwestern Mutual Life. And by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thank you. In 1939, Germany introduces a devastating new kind of warfare, Blitzkrieg. Lightning attacks by tanks and planes bring Europe to its knees. Blitzkrieg depends on surprise, demanding speedy communication. So radio is crucial to the attack plans. Every day, the skies are full of German radio signals. The German high command has trained thousands of wireless operators in preparation for the conquest of Europe. Their job is to be able to interpret Morse code in any conditions. But there is still the problem of how to keep the messages secret. So the German military has adopted a seemingly invincible code-making machine. The Enigma turns a message into unintelligible gibberish, letter by letter. When the message is sent in Morse code, all an enemy would see is a meaningless string of letters. But when the German operator at the receiving end types the coded letters back into his Enigma machine, the real message appears. In this way, vital war plans remain totally secret. 
the High Command never wavers from its belief in the security of Enigma. They are so confident that they deploy the Enigma throughout the German war machine. They never imagined what was about to happen at Bletchley Park. This is the machine the German High Command believed would protect their secrets. This is the Enigma. The complexity is enormous. I mean, if I sent just one message on an Enigma machine today, it would still take a super Cray computer, the fastest in the world, a year to go through searching for that one message without supporting evidence as to what that message might have been. Long before the war began, the airwaves were full of coded messages as Hitler prepared for battle. Cracking the German ciphers became the priority of a special British intelligence unit. In 1938, the unit, known as the Government Code and Cipher School, or GCNCS, moved into Bletchley Park, an ornate mansion 50 miles north of London. From this rooftop room, wireless operators contacted listening stations all over Britain that were intercepting German messages. Bletchley Park's code name was Station X. The challenge of breaking the enigma demanded a special kind of talent. GC and CS set about recruiting. The people who a few years earlier had regarded as too young and not knowing anything of importance, so not being real people, not, having, uh, not being significant grown-up people, suddenly they were the people who held the, the keys to the Reich. Code-breaking was a somewhat esoteric uh, profession, but it wasn't clear exactly who would make a good code-breaker. People who were recruited were asked whether they did crossword puzzles, and if they said they did and enjoyed doing them, and did them well, that was generally enough to get you in. We discovered people of a whole variety of backgrounds did very well. Anthropologists, Egyptologists, paleontologists, and even an occasional lawyer turned out to have the knack. Bletchley Park evolved into a unique operation in which military discipline, uniforms, and rank no longer mattered. The sole imperative was to break the enigma and break it as quickly as possible. At that age, you can just take fire and blaze away half out of your mind with uh, enthusiasm and dedication. You're not married, you don't have to worry about the kids and the rent and so forth. And during that sort of short period of your life, you can live like a madman and, uh, you know, take almost no sleep and uh, determined to do it. But youth and determination weren't enough. Mathematicians were enlisted to take on the daunting complexity of the enigma. Only a completely new approach to code breaking could help to penetrate its secrets. But if the work at Bletchley Park were to succeed, absolute secrecy was essential. Some of the recruits had no idea of the purpose of their work. Most of us who were among the, what shall I say, the hoi polloi, the lower grades, never knew what went on at Bletchley Park. The only time I realised what we were actually doing was when I was shown a code book which had just been captured and rushed to Bletchley from a captured plane. and. Of course, we had no plastic envelopes or anything then. The poor thing was just given to me as it was, and I was horrified to see a huge...